Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel, Kisty Reads. So today I am doing my most disappointing and worst books that I read in 2020. And yes, I know that there's a ton of controversy over if these videos should even be on YouTube, but guess what? Critical reviews are critical reviews and y'all need to get over yourselves. These are just purely books that I didn't like and if you can't handle that then you shouldn't have clicked here in the first place. I'm gonna start on the order of books that were okay and that I still enjoyed but they just didn't meet my expectations to books that I really hated and probably likely DNF. And for this video, I'm only selecting five books that I really didn't like with one honorary mention that I will mention obviously after this list is done. And I think that honorary mention of a book is definitely gonna be controversial for all the booktube lovers. But the book that's in fifth place for my most disappointing reads is definitely gonna have to be The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd Jones. I was going into this with really high expectations because the premise of it sounded amazing. But all I got from this YA novel was a very watered down version of a middle grade fairy tale instead of something spooky and something really heart wrenching. I was reading the book always hoping for something more to happen, for something crazier to happen, for something more intriguing to happen or steamy or scary or dark but it wasn't even that dark of a book and it has to do with <laughs> the undead and magic around that. I was so disappointed I can't even tell you. I was expecting this to be a five star read. It sounded like anything and everything that that I like and it just wasn't. I feel like this has been a popular book on booktube among some of my favorite booktubers and I'm just not really sure why. So for that reason, I had to put it as my fifth position. I think I gave this a three stars because it was still fun to read, but please go into it without the expectations that I had because my expectations were far too high. The book that wins fourth place in my worst books for 2020 definitely has to be The Glass Sword by Victoria Abigard. This is a special edition that I'm not really sure why I have because I definitely didn't go hunting this down, but I read the Red Queen series this year just out of sheer curiosity of what the hype was all about and I ended up reading past the first book and ended up reading the entire four books of the whole series because it's only four books and I really didn't love it that much. I can see why at the time it was a series that everyone on booktube loved but I didn't love it that much. It was okay, I still read it because I had it and I want to read what's on my physical TBR before I decide if I should keep it or unhaul it. And honestly, the second one in this series is probably the worst book in this series ever. It just felt like what should have been a few chapters became an entire novel for no reason and it dragged on and on and on. And honestly, I'm surprised that I continued with the series even though this book was so boring and it just dragged on so hard. But the fourth book in the series was definitely the best one for these four, so I can see why people didn't really like the series. I can see why people don't have any interest of reading it. And I do say that if you don't have interest in reading the series, it's not really worth the hype. I think at this point in time, there are other series that have come out that are much better than this one. So I think I gave this book like a two stars because there was some psychological intrigue that I found interesting, but that's it. The third place trophy in the worst books of 2020 was definitely The Final Weekend by Neil Cassidy. This is outside the genre that I usually read. I think it's like a new adult contemporary fantasy. And though I don't usually read contemporaries, I do still sometimes enjoy them. And this one was just a bunch of friends on a debaucherous weekend getting high and drunk. And you just read about how their weekend went. And I'm just like, is that really it to the entire story? It was bland. It was boring. It was plotless. I don't know why anyone would want to read this book unless you're like a cisgendered male that's interested in reading about other males that are drinking and getting high with a bunch of their friends in like a cabin all weekend long. It just wasn't interesting. I read it really quickly because I hated it so much that I wanted to get it off my shelf but I do not recommend this book to anyone at all. It was so boring. I think I gave it like one and a half stars and even that rating is too high. The second prize, the silver medal, if you will, goes to a book that I think is gonna cause a lot of controversy because I know a lot of folks really loved it and I was expecting it to really love it too. It even became a series on Netflix and I know that friends of mine have watched that series and also really love it, but the book itself I found to be really boring. I think I just need more plot in a book to get me really interested in it, otherwise it just drags on. I haven't actually seen the Netflix series for this, so maybe that's really good, but I don't recommend the book. And that is Good Omens by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. This, I 
think like won awards or something and was the best book of 2019. I started this in 2019 and ended up finishing it in 2020. It took me so long to get through, partly because I didn't want to pick it up and I kept on finding books that were of more interest to me and partly just because it's thick too. Don't let this mass market back fail you because it is still thick and it is still dense and and there are footnotes. That's yeah, there are also footnotes in this. So it's hard to get through a book enough as it is when it doesn't have a super engaging plot. And then also having footnotes feels like you're reading an essay and not a book. I felt like this was funny. It is pithy. It is clever. But the plot takes a long time. And it just felt like one of those failure to launch type of books which maybe that is the whole funny joke is that like it just takes forever and nothing really happens and that's hilarious but for me I just felt like I couldn't get through that type of book so I don't recommend this to anyone who likes higher stakes and really plot-based fun fantasy with like very complex characters I just felt like it wasn't what I wanted maybe at the time I have no plans on rereading this though because it just took me way too long though I would be curious to see what the Netflix series has because maybe the series on TV is better than the book itself let me know if you guys have read this one I feel like it's a really popular read for booktubers for book twitters for anyone that likes to read this was definitely on a lot of people's radar and I feel like a lot of copies were sold and purchased of this book but I just didn't seem to love it so I'm really curious to see if anyone else loved it or hated it. The book that takes all of the wins, all of the prizes, gold medal, five stars for being the worst book of 2020 for me was definitely Sisters Grimm by Mena Von Prague. I was really hoping to love it. This cover was stunning. The premise sounded amazing and in my mind I was like this is definitely going to be a five star read. But honestly it fell flat. I think I was like 60% of the way through when I decided to DNF it and I think it's one of the only books that I've ever really truly DNF'd and just given away because I couldn't stand it. It seems really interesting and you got bits and pieces of what seemed like could make a really intriguing and interesting plot and maybe more the plot happens towards the end of it but I just couldn't go through another 40% of just like having you know six or seven point of views it's very confusing to follow along it's a lot of character background and character development so you're not always sure if you're forwards or backwards in the timeline of the story i feel like the complex nature of the relationships that the author was trying to show us ended up being really watered down and had too many gaps in them to really capture my attention and i was not captivated at all i'm pretty sure this book actually put me in a reading slump which really sucks but i don't recommend this to anyone i didn't find it remotely enjoyable I and gave it like one or two stars. I DNF'd it. It was just really not my type of book. I think if you are someone who is mainly very, 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 very character driven and doesn't mind not really having much of a plot to go off of, then this book might be for you. But honestly, for me, the synopsis had more plot than the actual book had. So those are my top five most disappointing, just worst books of 2020. I didn't want to give a huge big list because I don't usually harshly dislike books. Those are the five of last year that I really couldn't stand. And if I'm going to speak badly about a book, it's got to be a book that I really don't like or really, really, really didn't meet any of my expectations. And those five were it. I do want to mention one that is really ridiculous. I think I gave it like a 2.5 or 3 stars. And that is Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mahurin. Now, if you've been around my channel, you know that I read Blood and Honey, which is the sequel. And I was really hoping for a different outcome for that book. I was really hoping to dive in more in another character's magic, which we did, but not enough for me. I just found Serpent and Dove to be really unrealistic in one, how the couple got together, that doesn't make sense, and two, how this insane song in the book is like pivotal in these really important moments and battles and just other insane things happening. And that, okay, you have a fantasy story, but even in this story, they don't make sense. <laughs> even in a fantasy novel, that situation doesn't even make sense. That one gets an honorary mention. It's still 2.5, three stars, because there were still parts of it that were redeeming and good. I did read the sequel, and in my opinion, it was better than the original. So I'll probably read the third book, but I am not really anticipating it, and I could definitely do without it if I had to. So those are my top five plus one worst and most disappointing books of 2020, books that I probably will never reread and never try again. So if you liked or disliked any of these books, leave your comments down below. I'm definitely really intrigued to hear if some of you disagree with me, and I'm also really interested to hear if any of you agreed with me on any of these opinions. If you like this video, please go ahead and click the like button. If you like my content, please feel free to subscribe and stick around for videos that I'm sure that you don't want to miss. Thank you.